C shape, G chord, pentatonic, and major scale position four or C shape, G chord. Get ready, because we're about to rock and or roll. Here we are in our worksheet, remembering that we have the top string on top. That's going to be the low or heavy E, the one closest to the ceiling, the high E on the bottom, the one closest to the floor, the zero representing the open fret, meaning if indicated, you wouldn't be fingering it, putting your finger on it, but rather ringing them out, leaving them open. The frets one, two, three, four, five, and so on, being the frets that you would be fingering if indicated, indicated in this case by the orange items here. Noting that now we're taking a look at the C position that we're moving up to the G chord. So in prior presentations, we started at the C position and the open position. And that's what you want to keep in your mind. You want to say anytime you're saying this is the C shape, that what you don't say, but what you have in your, in your mind, thoroughly in your mind, is the C shape in the open position. So that we can then move that shape up. So it's still the C shape in the open position. But now it would be a D chord an E chord, an F chord, now moving it up to the G chord, noting that you could go to the C sharp or, or D flat, the D sharp or E flat and so on, but we're just going to look at the full notes here. So we're going to go on down again. We're on the G. So here's going to be our G, same kind of thing. It's going to be determined by where your finger is on the A string in order to voice it in the same way as the open position. You would have to change your fingering to do so, but and you can learn that, and it's, it's, it's something worth doing. It's not too tough of a position to do, but it is a lot different. It's a lot more difficult than just the three fingers here. But even if you don't learn that, you can arpeggiate with the three fingers. You can learn how to basically position and voice things differently and know where you are in the positioning of the guitar. If someone's playing a G, some song in the key of G, which is very, very common, then uh, they, they're probably going to be playing this nice full... G chord, which in, in the open position is one of the fullest chords you have, all the strings ringing out nicely. And so you, you could do something else up here, possibly, and voice it a little bit differently and add something to the song quite easily uh, in that way. So then if we look at our, our little theory here, we're going to say if we took all the notes from G to G now, we went all the way through from G to G, we do our whole, whole half thing, we would go from G to A would be a whole step, A to B would be a whole step, B to C would be a half step, so whole, whole, half, and then whole to D, and then whole to E, and then whole to F, and that's basically it, but then you're going to do that last half step to resolve back to the G. And then if we just listed those out, that means the G scale here would be the full scale G, A, B, C, D, E. They got that one sharp on the F sharp, and so that's why it's, it's a very common uh, chord progression on the guitar because you got that nice full G, you got an open G string down here as well, and you've only got that one sharp, meaning it's pretty close in character then to the C major or or the A minor type of progression. So a lot of songs in G on the guitar. So then if we were to say, we're going to say that uh, we're going to map this out, we're going to take the first one, G, B, and D to m build the chord. So we're just going to skip every other note, G, B, D, G, B, D. And we're going to see that our now our fingers are on G, B, and D, G, B. So obviously we only need three of those notes in order to voice the major chord of a G. So you could do so by fingering it different ways. You can even have it in a different order, such as this item down here with the G, not the lowest string. But that's fine. It's still, it's still going to be a G chord. And so that is good, and it might, again, be a different voicing that could be a useful thing to have. You could also ring this out just in terms of your normal C by muting the string and muting this string so you can ring these three notes out oftentimes as well. Which, of course, there you got the two, you got the two Gs, you're kind of missing the D there. But, it, you know, it still sounds nice. You could have the two, the two note kind of chord, so it's still good. And so anything within, you can arpeggiate anything in here if the song is in the key of G and then and work it out through there. If we were then to analyze this a little bit further, then we could say, okay, if I numbered these, these notes in the G scale, be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if we wanted to play a song in the key of G, very common, you would apply the major minor kind of thing. You can say, well, the G would be the major. You could play it a minor A 
and then a minor B, a C major, a D major, an E minor, and then you typically drop the diminished <laughs> at the end. And then if you wanted to play the one, four, five, those are the majors, the G, C, D, many songs in that that area, G, C, D, one, four, five, in the key of G. So now let's unhide some cells up top, putting my cursor on this column and dragging over to this column. I'm just gonna right click and unhide. And so now if I moved that and I added the pentatonic, this is still position four, but now we're in the G area. So position four, like in the G area here, which you might then name it, you might start to call this, this is the C shape position or C shape pentatonic scale, which again, that could confuse people because they're gonna say, well, you know, a C chord only has three notes and pentatonic has five notes. Like, what do you mean? But a lot of people will, will actually that's the convention that they that many people used if they use this kind of caged system. So if you can, and it's a good system to, to learn because you're just learning for conventions on where to organize yourself on the fretboard. So you might see this as basically a, a C-shape pentatonic shape, this whole thing. It was always a C-shape pentatonic shape, but now it's in the G position because when you put your C shape within that pentatonic shape down, you're pointing this finger on the fifth fret, the A string to the G chord, which is the root determining that both the chord and the scale is in the key of G. And then you could basically do your voicings within here and add to a song. And, and this would be the second group of notes that would be the most safe thing to do. You could try to build your chords, possibly build in your chords here and try different fingerings with the blue notes in this case, adding then to it, see if you can get different voicings. You could then get into theory as to why they might work, but you would think then the next notes within the pentatonic scales would be the next, next items. And if you're just doing picking and playing along with a song, then this would be the next set of notes that would be uh, applicable to it then of course you can expand it once again to the to to the major scale just adding the next two notes and so now again you can call this a c shape in the open position that's what you don't normally say but it's a c shape if it were in the open position but it's a g uh it's a, and, and you could call the whole thing a c shape this is a c shape if it were in the open position major scale C shape major scale that is in the key of G, right? And this whole thing now you could you could say it like that. Again, it doesn't if you were just talking music theory, then the music theory doesn't take into position into into consideration where you are on the fretboard. And so what we're trying to do is find a way to anchor on the fretboard because you can play the G major scale different ways, many different ways. So this is one way we're going to voice it. We're going to say this shape is a C shape if it was the chord, which is inside of the major scale and the minor scale, which we can also call basically a C shape, just expanding that concept to the major shape of the C shape. And it happens to be in the key of G because when I put down my fingers in a C position, C chord position, the orange notes, the root note is here under the A string, which is a G. So then I can feel pretty confident playing all of the notes in basically that major scale. So what you would like to do if you're playing along with a song is practice arpeggiating the note and then expanding to being able to play the notes in the pentatonic scale. If you're doing a song in the key of G, then you're going to be always kind of trying to go back to the home base of the G here, the G here, because that's going to give it that sound of a G as opposed to some other, like a minor scale or some other you know, variant of, of the G scale. And then, and so, and then you can expand, of course, out to the blue notes and add those in to your progression so that you get in your mind, this is a C shape position that has the note, has the notes of the major chord expanding to the pentatonic, expanding to the major, the major uh, components of it. And of course, then if you look at the theory here, you got the one the G, B, D, and then you can add the two notes to, to get it up to a pentatonic, and then all the notes would be included, the seven notes for the major scale.